am Elaine Walker and I teach electronic music at Scottsdale Community College and we have just started a student club called Electronic Music Ensemble Club and here I have Cody and Matt. Matt's the leader of the club. Uh, Got it so all is going. Cody. And so is Cody. Kind of. Okay. <laughs> um, we are going to make some alternative MIDI controllers that that the students are going to eventually perform with. So the first thing we're going to do is something kind of wacky. They've gone out and bought this super cyber glove from Fredericks. And we're going to put triggers on them. And we'll explain all this as we go. Yeah, so we are preparing the arm trigger device here. As you can see, have the triggers lined up here on the forearm. We have one on the top of the hand, and these four will go under. And we're connecting it to a wire that's right here. You know, one of these old school printer cable. So I'm going to show real quick, because I don't want these guys to get injured, sue the college, um, how to strip this down and access the little itsy bitsy wires inside of this. Now the reason you, to use this old school printer cable is because it has, you know, 25 wires in it. We only need 18. And it's flexible, like a guitar cable. Couldn't think of anything else that has those same properties. And it just so happens to be the exact same gauge wire as these triggers. Can you see it? You can get these from Radio Shack. But if you're in the Phoenix area, don't buy them all because we need them. Thank you. Okay, so take a scary knife and scoot that over a bit. And you just kind of go straight down, not too hard as to cut the wires inside, but just enough. And feet died. do not chop your fingers. Oh, it's still recording. Is it still recording? Should be. Can you hear me? All the way down. Oh, oh yeah, and okay, we're so turning. So then once you get this cut all the way down to the bottom, then it's super easy. All you do is peel it away, grab this, use all your might. Cool, huh? Then you can get rid of this ugly old tan plastic from the 80s. And it's just got this shielding. Just take that right off. It's just like tin foil. Look at all these pretty wires. Yep. Yay! <laughs> pretty. Okay. So now what we're doing is taking stripping this... Stripping wire. We're stripping. Woohoo! <laughs> Um, this no. old school burner cable, taking the little wires, and you can see Cody is stripping the plastic for the ends off to reveal the actual wire. Like so, too small to see. And then Oops. the purpose of this, at this point, because we haven't really measured the wires to see how long they need to be or anything, but we need to figure out which wire goes to which pin because there's mm -hmm. no way to know. So, now that we have one, Cody, Cody can continue stripping if you want. I'm I can just stop cutting the wire. <laughs> We're gonna use Cut. this, uh, everything I own is from Radio Shack, so it's all so to keep track very affordable and it works. All the ones that um, are stripped or, you know, We're gonna like put that. <laughs> all right, we're gonna put this on ohms, because that's how you can tell if the wire is connecting from end to end if you're completing the circuit or whatever. So what we do is take one of these handy clip wires. It's got a clip on both ends. So 
one of these that strip, you just clip it on. And then clip this on one of the two cables that comes off of the multimeter. <laughs> like that. Okay, so we've got this wire connected into here and then it's coming out to here. Okay, so then touch to each pin. So here, I'll let you do that, uh -huh. Cody. Well, Matt's stripping. Is this going to like electrocute him or anything? No. Go for it. You got it. Okay, see how it says uh -oh. zero? Whichever one that you touch when it says zero, ta da! That's the wire. That's the pin. When it says right zero? There. So can you tell which pin that is that's making it connect? Uh. <clears throat> and that's probably it. If it's not the right pin, put it on a totally random other pin or take it off. That's what it looks like when it's not the right pin. There's no connection. And there you're connecting the loop. So that's pin number, pin number 13. So which is that? Okay, so then what we have to do is label that itsy bitsy wire 13. So I'm gonna go get some tape so we can label this. All right, well, uh, <laughs> I'm testing again. I got another wire. What so number is this? This one is number one. Yay. Yay! Two mm. down. Lots to more go. to go. So I'll let you guys do the work since this is your club. And I'll go play. Whee! <laughs> Let me go get baloney. <laughs> Oh boy, I get another one. Oh boy. What's the charge? It's 100 million volts. Oh, crap. Doo, doo, doo. Hi, Bologna. How's it coming, guys? It's coming, slowly. Baloney's come to check on you. Okay. Alright, so Cody and Matt are working hard stripping the wires and numbering them. Uh, so I'm just going to talk for a second about what these triggers are. These are from Radio Shack and they just cost like $1.99. Or you could go to Guitar Center and spend however much $30 it costs to buy a trigger to glue like on your, say like on your acoustic drums and then plug it into an interface so you can get like electronic sounds for your drums. This would be kind of the same idea called a piezo transducer. Basically it just senses vibration so mainly if you hit it even a really loud sound can set it off too though and what happens is a little tiny voltage blip shoots down the wire just a little blip and this is eventually going to get soldered to that group of wires and it's going to get connected all the way to, you can see way in the background there, those are drum cats. It's like a drum trigger interface. And that is, we'll talk about that later. So, but I, I want to show you now is what to do to fix these triggers so they don't just get set off with loud sound. I learned the hard way because I had these on my triggers. And the first time we went to play a gig, um, the music was so loud they were randomly triggering. So to avoid these being set off with just air pressure from loud sound, we're gonna fill in this hole very carefully. It's very hard to do with silicone. Basically just, we're gonna squeeze silicone out of here. And see, it's not gonna go in the hole because there's air in there and there's pressure, but you just gotta kinda mush it in there. And this is just something I kind of figured out one day trying to get rid of that problem. Now, we can also take these out of the case completely and just cover it all in silicone. That works too, but we're going to leave these in the cases for this project because we want these little holes on the sides. They're going to be handy to sew these somehow to <laughs> the glove itself. 
We don't want to have to glue it to the material. Matt was making a face. So we're just kind of trying to figure out how they're eventually going to sew these on. It's kind of funny because we have to use a sewing kit in this project. So I think they're just going to like sew this loop and then sew this loop. And we'll continue this next week at the next meeting of the Electronic Music Ensemble Club. Scottsdale yeah. Community College. Over and out.